Maritime Academy. Ship construction. Chief made course. Duration, 40 hours. Session, 20. Reference books. Merchant Ship Construction DA. Taylor, Ship Construction DJ. Ayers, Merchant Ship Construction HJ. Percy, Shipboard Operations H. I. Lavery. Aims, know the structural materials in ship construction. Objectives, know the composition of various types of steels. Know the properties of various types of steels. Know the properties of aluminium. Ship construction materials. The materials used for the construction of ship structure, hull and machinery are steels, cast iron, non-ferrous metals, non-ferrous alloys, polymers, etc. The most widely used material is steel, which is essentially an alloy of iron and carbon, containing up to 2% carbon. Most cast irons contain 2% to 3.5% carbon and are widely used for the construction of machinery due to their good casting properties and strength. Non-ferrous metals such as aluminium, copper and their alloys are also widely used as a result of their ability to resist corrosion, good mechanical strength, easy casting and machinability. An alloy is a mixture of two or more elements in solid solution in which the major component is a metal. Most pure metals are either too soft, brittle or chemically reactive for practical use. The aim of making alloys is generally to make them less brittle, harder, resistant to corrosion, or have a more desirable color and luster. Examples of alloys are steel, iron and carbon, brass, copper and zinc, bronze, copper and tin, and duralumin aluminium and copper. Pig iron blast furnace. Limestone, iron ore, and coke are charged in alternate layers in the furnace. Coke is burned and oxygen is forced through the base of the furnace. 3,500 degrees F. Slag is drawn off of the high notch. Molten iron is drawn off of the lower notch. Molten iron, pig iron, is poured into molds or sent directly to refining. Blast Furnace Steel production involves the smelting of iron ore and the making of pig iron. Pig iron is 92 to 97 percent iron, the remainder being carbon, silicon, manganese, sulfur, and phosphorus. Steel manufacturing processes includes open hearth process, electric furnace, basic oxygen process, Bessemer, not being used for shipbuilding steel. Open hearth process. Nin the furnace, which has a wide, saucer-shaped hearth and a low roof. Molten pig iron and scrap are packed into the shallow hearth and heated by overhead gas burners using preheated air. Incapable of producing large quantities of steel, handling 150 to 300 tons in a single melt. Na mixture of pig iron and steel scrap is melted in the furnace, carbon and the impurities being oxidized. In carbon, manganese, and other elements are added to eliminate iron oxides and give the required chemical composition. Open Hearth Furnace Electric Arc Furnace Melting is produced by striking an arc between electrodes suspended from the roof of the furnace and the charge itself in the hearth of the furnace. A charge consists of pig iron and steel scrap and the process enables consistent results to be obtained and the final composition of the steel can be accurately controlled. Electric arc used to heat and remove impurities. Used for making stainless steel, carbon tool steel, and high alloy steels and for recycling scrap. Time for each heat determined by the amount of scrap included in the charge.
basic oxygen process. A molten charge of pig iron and steel scrap with alloying elements is contained in a basic line converter. A jet of high purity gaseous oxygen is then directed onto the surface of the liquid metal in order to refine it. Source of most of the steel produced today uses oxygen blown into the furnace through a water-cooled lance, exothermic reaction. No heating required, up to 200 tons per heat. Heat requires 45 to 60 minutes. Automatic process controlled by a computer results in clean product with very tight specifications. Chemical addition to steel. Additions of chemical elements to steels during steel manufacturing processes serve several purposes. They may be used to deoxidize a metal, to remove impurities and bring them out into the slag, and finally to bring about the desired composition. Steel making. Definitions. Tensile strength. This is the main single criterion with reference to metals. It is a measure of a material's ability to withstand the loads upon it in service. Force at which a material breaks due to stretching. The two main factors affecting tensile strength are the carbon content of steel and its heat treatment following manufacture. Ductility. This is the ability of a material to undergo permanent changes in shape without loss of strength, deformed before fracturing. Hardness, resistance to defamation or penetration. This is a measure of the workability of a material. It is used as an assessment of the machinability of the material and its resistance to abrasion. Toughness, ability to resist shock or impact. This is a condition midway between brittleness and softness. It is often quantified by a value obtained in a notched bar test. Classes of steel based on their use, dead mild steels, steels containing up to 0.15% carbon which are generally used for press work and other applications where high ductility is necessary in forming, e.g., motor car bodies, tin cans, nails and wires. Mild steels, steels containing 0.15% to 0.3% carbon, higher tensile strength and hardness when compared with dead mild steels used for structural members, shafting, levers, and various forging. Steels used for castings usually contain 0.3% to 0.35% carbon. Classes of steel based on their use, medium carbon steels, steels containing 0.4% to 0.6% carbon, widely used for components such as axles, connecting rods, gears, wire ropes, rails, etc., which require higher tensile strength, toughness, and hardness, can be hardened by heat treatment process. High carbon steels, steels containing 0.6% to 1.5% carbon, used to make cutting tools. Shipbuilding steels, steel for hull construction purposes is usually mild steel containing 0.15% to 0.23% carbon and a reasonably high manganese content. Both sulfur and phosphorus and mild steel are kept to a minimum. Steels for a ship classed with any of the classification societies are produced by approved manufacturers and inspection and prescribed tests are carried out at the steel mill before dispatch. All test pieces are stamped by a surveyor or his authorized deputy. Every finished item is also marked with a society's brand where it complies with the society's requirements. Different qualities of steel employed in merchant ship construction are graded A, B, C, D, and D. Grade A being an ordinary mild steel. Grade B is a better quality mild steel than grade A and is specified where thicker quality plates are required in the more critical regions. Grades C, D, and E possess increasing notch tough characteristics. Grades of steel. Plates up to 20.5 millimeters in thickness ordinary steel, 
carbon content equals 0.23%, manganese 2.5 times carbon. B, better quality than A, reduced carbon and manganese content, used for plate thickness, 20.5 to 25.5 millimeters. C, better notch stiffness than A or B, reduced carbon content. D, used for plates 25.5 to 40 millimeters. E, used for plates greater than 40 millimeters in thickness, High tensile steels. Steels having a higher strength than that of mild steel are employed in the more highly stressed regions of large tankers, container ships, and bulk carriers. Use of higher strength steels allows reductions in thickness of deck, bottom shell, and framing were fitted in the midships portion of larger vessels. The increased strength of high tensile steels can be obtained in several different ways. The amounts of carbon and manganese may be increased or various alloying elements may be introduced. The alloys which may be used include silicon, increases strength and deoxidize 02, copper, increases corrosion resistance, chromium, increases hardness stiffness, nickel, adds strength, molybdenum, aluminium, niobium, and vanadium. Advantages. One saving of structural weight. Two, the saving of weld metal. Three, the ease of handling for the possibility of building up bigger fabricated units. Disadvantages. 1. The smaller allowable amount of wastage by corrosion. 2. The possibility of increased vibration because of reduction of mass. 3. The greater care required when burning and welding. 4. The increased bending or deflection, either hogging or sagging, which arises from the reduced moment of inertia. Steel casting. Molten steel produced by the open hearth, electric furnace, or oxygen process is poured into a carefully constructed mold and allowed to solidify to the shape required. After removal from the mold a heat treatment is required, for example annealing, or normalizing and tempering, to reduce brittleness. Stern frames, rudder frames, spectacle frames for bossings, and other structural components may be produced as castings. More efficient, no need to reheat for shaping slash finishing. Reduced waste, molten metal flows into mold and water cooled, metal rolled and cut to desired length. Continuous casting. This is a type of steel with little or no treatment to remove the oxygen. The central core of ingot has massive blowholes. Hot rolling of the ingot usually weld up these holes. Steel casting. Killed steel. Molten steel is deoxidized in the ladle or ingot by adding aluminum, silicon, titanium, calcium or zirconium in various combinations and quantities. Produces a uniform slash homogeneous grade of steel of superior quality to rim steel. Steel forging. A method of shaping a metal by heating it to a temperature where it becomes more or less plastic and then hammering or squeezing it to the required form. Fodgings are manufactured from killed steel made by the open hearth, electric furnace, or oxygen process, the steel being in the form of ingots cast in chill molds. Subsequent heat treatment is required, preferably annealing or normalizing and tempering, to remove effects of working and non-uniform cooling. Heat treatment, an operation, or series of operations, involving the heating and cooling of steel in the solid state that bring about a change in the mechanical properties principally by modifying the steel structure. This is related to the crystalline structure of carbon and iron. When steel is heated or cooled, then at certain temperatures, the temperature remains constant although heat is applied or lost. Such points are called arrest points or critical points. At these points, the structure of the material changes. Heat treatments which concern ship building materials, annealing, normalizing, hardening or quenching, tempering, stress relieving. Annealing. This consists of heating the steel at a slow rate to a temperature of say 850 degrees Celsius to 950 degrees Celsius and then cooling it in the furnace at a very slow rate. 
The objects of annealing are to relieve any internal stresses, to soften the steel, or to bring the steel to a condition suitable for a subsequent heat treatment. Normalizing. The steel is heated to a determined temperature above the critical range, 850 coulombs degree to 950 degrees C. Cold to below that range in still air. Result. Promotes uniformity of the structure and alters mechanical properties. Molecular structure changes. Results in higher strength, hardness, and less ductility. Cools faster than stress relieving or annealing. Hardening or quenching. Steel is heated to temperatures similar to that for annealing and normalizing, and then quenched in water or oil. The fast cooling rate produces a very hard structure with a higher tensile strength. Tempering. Quenched steels may be further heated to a temperature somewhat between atmospheric and 680 degrees Celsius, and some aloe steels are then cooled fairly rapidly by quenching in oil or water. The object of this treatment is to relieve the severe internal stresses produced by the original hardening process and to make the material less brittle but retain the higher tensile stress. Stress relieving reduces internal stresses that may have been caused by machining cold working or welding. Heat the metal to a temperature below the critical range, 1100 F. Hold until temperature is reached throughout the piece. Allow to cool slowly. Rolling. Rolling is the main method used to shape steel into different products after it has been cast. There are two types of rolling, hot and cold. The rolling process for both hot and cold consists of passing the steel between two rolls revolving at the same speed but in opposite directions. The gap between the rolls is smaller than the steel being rolled, so that the steel is reduced in thickness and at the same time lengthened. Hot rolling. Before hot rolling, slabs, blooms and billets are heated in a furnace to about 1200 degrees Celsius. This makes it easier to roll the steel and removes the rough, flaky surface or scale. Cold rolling. Certain types of steel are also cold rolled after hot rolling. Before cold rolling the steel is cleaned with acid, pickled, to remove the scale. Cold rolling is carried out at room temperature and is rolled at very fast speeds using lubricants to reduce friction. Cold rolling increases strength, makes steel thinner, and produces a bright smooth surface. Hot rolling. Effect of elements, mild steel, Carbon content between 0.15 to 0.23%, tensile strength, 41 minus 50 kg slash 2. Carbon increases tensile strength, ductility, and notchtiveness. Manganese increases tensile strength and notchtiveness. Sulfur produces hot shortness. Phosphorus reduces ductility and toughness and creates faults. Terms, common terms, tensile strength. Ability of a material to withstand load and service. Ductility. Ability of a material to undergo permanent change in shape without loss of strength. Hardness. Measure of workability of a material. Toughness. Ability of a material to resist crack formation. Notch toughness. Those that have a greater ability to resist the spreading of a crack. Heat treatment. Changing the physical properties of steel by changing the metal's grain structure by heating to a specific temp and then cooling. Brittle fracture, a crack with a bright granular appearance and herring bone pattern pointing towards the source, caused by poor design fabrication. Stress and strain. Stress is defined as force per unit area. It has the same units as pressure, and in fact pressure is one special variety of stress. Stress is a measure of the ability of a material to transmit a load and the intensity of stress in the material, which is the load per unit area, is often stated. Strain is defined as the amount of deformation an object experiences compared to its original size and shape. 
For example, if a block 10 cm on a side is deformed so that it becomes 9 cm long, the strain is 10 minus 9, slash 10 or 0.1, sometimes expressed in percent, in this case 10%. Note that strain is dimensionless. Type of stress, compression, stress that acts to shorten an object, tension, stress that acts to lengthen an object, normal stress, stress that acts perpendicular to a surface, can be either compressional or tensional, shear, stress that acts parallel to a surface, it can cause one object to slide over another, it also tends to deform originally rectangular objects into parallelograms. The most general definition is that shear acts to change the angles in an object. Hydrostatic stress, usually compressional, that is uniform in all directions. A scuba diver experiences hydrostatic stress. Stress in the earth is nearly hydrostatic. The term for uniform stress in the earth is lithostatic. Classification. Society tests for hull materials. One impact test. The object of the impact test is to determine the toughness of the material, that is its ability to withstand fracture under shock loading. This specimen is placed on an anvil, and the pendulum is allowed to swing so that the striker hits the specimen opposite the notch and fractures it. Energy absorbed in fracturing the specimen is automatically recorded by the machine. Basically, making allowances for friction, the energy absorbed in fracturing the specimen is the difference between the potential energy the pendulum possesses before being released and that which it attains in swinging past the vertical after fracturing the specimen. Impact Test Classification Society tests for hull, materials, 2. Tensil test. Tensile tests are simple, relatively inexpensive, and fully standardized. By pulling on something, you will very quickly determine how the material will react to forces being applied in tension. As the material is being pulled, you will find its strength along with how much it will elongate. As you continue to pull on the material until it breaks, you will obtain a good, complete tensile profile. A curve will result showing how it reacted to the forces being applied. The point of failure is of much interest and is typically called its ultimate strength, or UDS. Tensile test. Yield point. The yield strength or yield point of a material is the stress at which a material begins to deform plastically. Prior to the yield point the material will deform elastically and will return to its original shape when the applied stress is removed. Once the yield point is passed some fraction of the deformation will be permanent and non-reversible. Ultimate Tensile Strength The Ultimate Tensile Strength UTS, is the maximum resistance to fracture. It is equivalent to the maximum load that can be carried by one square inch of cross-sectional area when the load is applied as simple tension. It is expressed in pounds per square inch. UDS equal maximum load slash area of original cross-section psi. Modulus of elasticity. Modulus of elasticity is the mathematical description of an object or substance's tendency to be deformed elastically, i.e., non-permanently when a force is applied to it. The elastic modulus of an object is defined as the slope of its stress-strain curve in the elastic deformation region. Moe equals stress slash strain. Stress is the force causing the deformation divided by the area to which the force is applied. And strain is the ratio of the change caused by the stress to the original state of the object. If stress is measured in pascals. Notch. Tiffness, notch tiffness is the ability that a material possesses to absorb energy in the presence of a flaw. In the presence of a flaw, such as a notch or crack, a material will likely exhibit a lower level of tiffness. When a flaw is present in a material, loading induces a triaxial tension stress state adjacent to the flaw. The material develops plastic strains as the yield stress is exceeded in the region near the crack tip. However, 
the amount of plastic deformation is restricted by the surrounding material, which remains elastic. When a material is prevented from deforming plastically, it fails in a brittle manner. Impact test is to ensure that minimum standard of notch stiffness exists. Brittle fracture. Brittle fracture occurs when an otherwise elastic material fractures without any apparent sign or little evidence of material deformation prior to failure. Fracture occurs instantaneously, with little warning, and the vessel's overall structure need not be subject to a high stress at the time. Mild steel used extensively in ship construction is particularly prone to brittle fracture given the conditions necessary to trigger it off. Factors influences brittle fracture. A sharp notch is present in the structure from which the fracture initiates. A tensile stress is present. There is a temperature above which brittle fracture will not occur. The metallurgical properties of the steel plate. Thick plate is more prone. Stress strain curve for mild steel. Production of aluminum. The ore, bauxite, is mined containing roughly 56% aluminum. The actual extraction of the aluminum from the ore is a complicated and costly process involving two distinct stages. Firstly, the bauxite is purifying to obtain pure aluminum oxide known as alumina. The alumina is then reduced to a metallic aluminum. The metal is cast in pig or ingot forms, and alloys are added where required before the metal is cast into billets or slabs for subsequent rolling, extrusion, or other forming operations. Aluminium. Alloys. Pure aluminum has a low tensile strength and is of little use for structural purposes. Therefore, the pure metal is alloyed with small percentages of other materials to give greater tensile strengths. There are a number of aluminum alloys in use, but these may be separated into two distinct groups, non-heat-treated alloys and heat-treated alloys. A heat-treated aluminum alloy, which is suitable for shipbuilding purposes, is one having as its main alloying constituents magnesium and silicon. These form a compound mg 2 psi, and the resulting alloy has very good resistance to corrosion and a higher ultimate tensile strength than that of the non-heat-treated alloys. Advantages, weight saving, corrosion resistance, non-magnetic, high thermal conductivity, notch duff at low temperatures, disadvantages, costly, lower melting point, galvanic corrosion, vibration. Aluminium alloys, usage, superstructures, deck houses, funnels, masts, guardrails, vent trunks, etc. Connections, special connections to steel, Fire protection. When discussing aluminum alloys, the fire protection is more critical in ships in which this material is used because of the low melting point of aluminum alloys. During a fire, the temperatures reached may be sufficient to cause a collapse of the structure unless protection is provided. The insulation on the main bulkheads and passenger ships will have to be sufficient to make the aluminum bulkhead equivalent to a steel bulkhead for fire purposes. For the same reason, it is general practice to fit steel machinery casings through an aluminum superstructure on cargo ships. Aluminum alloy tests. Aluminum alloy plate and section material is subject to specified tensile tests. Bar material for aluminum alloy rivets is subject to a tensile test and also a dump test. The latter test requires compression of the bar until its diameter is increased to 1.6 times the original diameter without cracking occurring. Selected manufactured rivets are also subjected to the same dump test. Questions Distinguish between low carbon steel and mild steel based on carbon content. Mild steel is used in shipbuilding. Distinguish between different grades of mild steel plates as per Lloyd's Register of Shipping Grades and indicate some of the areas of usage. Some of the alloying elements have beneficial effects, whilst others are undesirable in the manufacture of steel. Highlight the effects of carbon, manganese, sulfur, phosphorus, nitrogen, and oxygen in general terms. What are high tensile steels, and how are they named differently from normal grade steels? 
Enumerate the advantages and disadvantages of using high tensile steels. What does the term notch tough imply, and how is notch toughness of steel determined? Describe and name the test used. Outline the advantages and disadvantages of using aluminium alloy in shipbuilding. List some areas of its usage. What are the different grades of mild steels used in ship construction under the Classification Society's requirements? How is it ensured that the properties required are present in the steels produced for ship construction? Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of incorporating aluminium into structures of vessels. In the construction of many ships, aluminium and steel are closely associated. How is the maintenance of these parts affected? Explain with the aid of a diagram, yield point, ultimate tensile stress, modulus of elasticity. Maritime Academy